All right, welcome to Site Talk, exploring construction with the TikTok inspector. This podcast, uh, basically what we do is that we uncover the stories, insights, and challenges of the construction industry. I'm your host, Zahia, aka the TikTok inspector, and together we'll dive into the fascinating world of building and design. So join us as we chat with architects, builders, construction professionals, lawyers, and more. We'll explore their experiences, tap into their expertise and gain valuable perspectives on the ever-evolving landscape of construction. And joining us today is a forensic plumber. His name is Russell Kirkwood from uh, Metropolis Solutions. Russell is a licensed plumber with 25 years experience across large-scale commercial projects, heating and cooling, roof plumbing and general domestic plumbing work. He has operated his own business for the past 23 years, initially in plumbing and later on in plumbing design consultancy. So, yeah, there's Russell. So, uh, yeah, do you want to tell us a bit about your background and how you came about where you are now? Yeah, no worries. Uh, So I actually grew up in Sydney uh, and I did my apprenticeship uh, in plumbing uh, for a local council up there. Um, and uh, so I, I worked up there till I was uh, 27. Yep. And then when I was 27, I moved down to Melbourne and uh, took up residency down here and started working in the plumbing industry in Victoria. So um, around around 2006, I uh, took some work working for uh, insurance loss adjusters. Mm. And from that, that's sort of a bit of a changing moment for me where yep. I started to see a different side of the industry uh, I was looking through the insurance lens at, at the plumbing industry, which is a, a much different way yeah. to look at it. So I worked for uh, people who were working on the plumber's warranty scheme in Victoria. And so, you know, pretty well every every ridiculous thing that could happen to plumbers, every stupid thing that plumbers could do yeah. ended up with us. Oh, and yeah, we yeah. were we were trying to sort that out for, for the insurers uh, and for the plumbers. So in 2015, I uh, jumped out of, working for the plumbing industry in through the insurance. And I, with um, another guy, David Pocket, formed a business called Metropolis. And we offered those kind of services that were at that point only available to um, insurers, to homeowners, body corporates, and lawyers. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. And basically, you saw this pro- problem with the plumbing industry. And that's why you basically started this new business uh, called Dam Buster as well. Well, yeah, so, at, yeah. At the time when we yeah. when we took uh, took, took Metropolis into yeah. the marketplace, the ideas for Dam Buster were already there, yeah. and so we we'd actually uh, you know in uh, I think it was around 2010, 2011 when the drought broke, the millennial drought broke in in Victoria, and so at that point there we just had houses you know flooded all over the country, and it was on one of those jobs that I went to. I remember it as clear as day. I uh, I was looking at this roof on a um, nursing home down in Geelong and the whole thing was flooded. Yeah. And when we checked the, the bomb site to see, you know, how much water had fell on that roof, it was a once in one year rain event. Yeah. And we had a whole flooded nursing home with a once in one year rain event oh, and yeah. the penny dropped for me at that point. Um, and so from that time on, around about 2010, I started uh, thinking about the dam buster ideas. Yeah. And then in 2015, we patented it and began yeah. producing them. So, all right. Thank you for that. Um, what I wanted to ask you as well is that are you able to explain what is basically a breach of the Australian standard if you see a non-compliant item you know, during your inspections for the average homeowner? Uh, what, what does that even mean? Oh, right. Okay. So plumbing, uh, you know, what I like to say about plumbing is it's uh, it's not a creative pastime. It's It's not about plumbers coming up with making up, oh, we've got this problem with the roof, let's fix it this way. Uh, there are lots of constraints. Plumbing is either right or wrong. It's usually uh, pretty easy to see whether yeah. something's right or wrong. And so most of the time when people are experiencing problems with their leaking roofs or yeah. whatever and they're being told all these you know, stories and myths about what's wrong, yeah, yeah. it's because someone hasn't complied with a fundamental performance requirement of either the National Construction Code or the Australian Standards. Yep, all right. Um, you know, the VBA, you know, are going around and doing these inspections. Yeah. They're doing these inspections. And, uh, and if we look at the latest findings, I'll just open that up now. The quarterly kind of findings for plumbing. And I was surprised 
uh, of the total amount of non-compliant items. So you can see here, and we'll show an extract on the screen later on, but we've got total plumbing inspections, 1,210. In regional, they've got 41% of site, sites with compliance risks. And then you've got, in Melbourne, uh, 31%. So it's a high number. Yeah, and what's really crazy about that is they've also excluded all the low, uh, the, they've, they've got this hierarchy, yeah, and they've yeah, taken right. out of those numbers the low, the, the low risk, what they consider low risk. And so those numbers are only the, the higher risk uh, yeah. versions. So uh, it's an interesting study. It's only 1,200, what was it, 1,210? 210, yeah. So really that's not a lot when you consider how massive the, the Victorian building industry actually is. So they're having a look at a snapshot of some houses. Uh, now, that, and I think this study was trying to look at 10% of the, uh, yeah. the, the, the jobs that were currently um, yeah. had a building permit on them or something. I'm not sure whether that plumbing number actually reflects that. But the reality there is that, you know, that number there, 41% with defective items is yeah. pretty, pretty staggering uh, in a system of self-compliance. So, uh, you know, the plumbers yeah. sign their own compliance certificates and say everything's hunky-dory with the standards yeah. here. I'm signing this off as compliant and the VBA are telling us just a simple audit of over a 1,000 houses showed that 41% of those were not compliant. That's, that's amazing. And the thing is, what I found in interesting is that uh, the VBA has... They've got this risk assessment table. It's a matrix of colors. They've got low risk, which is a pass. Then you've got low risk, low impact, non-compliance, then medium risk and high risk. And we're going to put a extract to show you guys how what, what they say about each one. But you just said before that the plumbing code is either right or wrong, one or zero. Yeah, these guys have now got a matrix of saying, hey, look, this is a low risk, non-compliance. And for example, low risk, low, low, low impact, non-compliance says it is likely that the non-compliant it is likely that the non-compliance if left untreated would cause an adverse effect on the safety and the amenity of the occupants financial loss etc but so do they have to fix that or not oh yeah yeah it's <laughs> you know? it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one isn't it like non-compliance means you have to fix it and my experience yeah. is that when we're you know, um, hired by a, a law firm, say, for instance, yeah. to prepare documentation for uh, taking to VCAT, yeah. you hoover up all of the defects. Uh, it's not It's not like a, only the really, really bad ones that could really damage them. It's everything. Mm. And it's all packaged in. So at, yeah. at that kind of level where, you know, it's getting down to VCAT and getting really serious, yeah. definitely this needs to be fixed. And my experience is that in the insurance industry as well, when uh, there's an insurance claim um, against a plumber, they have to fix all of the defects. So do you, do you actually even reference this kind of matrix, say, hey, look, I found these findings and he's a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a I, table? I, I, do you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to be really blunt here and say yeah. I just totally ignore their matrix oh, really? uh, when it comes to uh, taking things to, to, yeah. to VCAT. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. So you just say, hey, this is non-compliant and this is what the standards say. And this is what needs to be done. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. You exactly. don't just give him this option. Say, mate, nah, I came to site and it's a breach of AS3500.3. This is the clause. And you got to fix it. I mean, why would you even have this table? Is that I, I really got confused when I saw that. Yeah, it's, it's a way of them trying to uh, to to work out what you know might might be damaging the building right at this oh, point okay. in time yeah. and what might not. Um, so, you know, I can understand why they're doing it. But it's, it's not actually how the Australian standards works in relation to plumbing. And just to back up a section, in Victoria, every single job that a plumber does has to have a compliance certificate if the value of the work, which includes the materials, is more than $750. Now, yeah. that, that, that pretty well is every job that but the with, plumbers Sorry, do. within five, you said, like, how long? I think, I think I read this, and it, it does say that $700, and they have to provide it within five days. Seven or five, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's five days. Five it's days. Five Who does that? Like, none yeah. of the plumbers do that. Yeah, they often <laughs> miss this. Uh, it's quite it's quite, a, it's quite an interesting system. Yeah. It's built around consumer protection. Yeah. And so the plumbers have to say that this work has is uh, compliant. Now, down the yeah. bottom of their certificate there's a little bit that they sign and it says, I certify that this work complies with yeah. Part 12A of the Building Act. Now, Part 12A of the Building Act um, references all of the Australian standards yeah. like AS3500 yep. and HB39, HB114. So when they're, when they're signing that off, that would be for roofing, but for, for any yep. plumbing that they do, 
they have to uh, do it in accordance with the standard. So therefore, they're, they're signing away. It's going to be per- it's got to be perfect every time. It's a self certification system. Everyone's relying on them. The, the homeowners relying on them. The insurers relying on them. Yeah. So how how does uh, so the building surveyor doesn't actually check the plumber's work. So he the plumber will give oh. the certificate that he reckons it's compliant, which. You know, from your findings, most of them are non-compliant when you go on the roof. Yeah. How the hell do that? Like, how can they do that? Sign something that's non-compliant? Yeah, well, it's a, it's an interesting, it's, a, it's, it's puzzling, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, uh, you're signing a way to say that work is 100% compliant with the standard and the building surveyor takes that compliance certificate and pops it in with the rest of the certificates for that house. Yeah, but the build, when the building surveyor receives that certificate, he doesn't go on the roof to check if he's done it right? No. That's no. a big problem, isn't it? It's a self-certification yeah. system for plumbers. So do you think that needs to be changed? Like, just give us your opinion on it. Oh, my opinion? Uh, not, you know what? Self-certification is relying on humans to be very good. Yep. Uh, that's not been my experience. I mean, we can see from the VBA with, with their own findings, they yeah. go <laughs> 41% non-compliant. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, in, yeah. in uh, the electrical uh, area, they yeah. also have non-compliance and they don't have nearly the same issues that we have oh. in plumbing. Uh, and that's yeah. because they have uh, another another section of licensing for um, inspectors. So there's private inspectors for yeah. electrical. Uh, we don't have that for plumbing. Yeah, so yeah. I'm probably the closest thing to a private yeah. inspector for plumbing. Um, and I go out there working for the lawyers against the plumbers. If there was uh, another, another licensing yeah. uh, category for uh, an inspector in plumbing, then maybe uh, that would help. Uh, would add some little costs. Uh, here and there, but I'm yeah. sure it would actually be very helpful for the system. Oh, for sure. All right. Um, look, I, I want to get into uh, the rain heads. <laughs> you know, we've got um, people, people, especially roof plumbers, they go that that new rain head design, that's what they're calling it, with a 25 mil offset from the bottom of the uh, box cutter. Yeah. How it's full, it should be fully open is a new design. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. Because the VBAs. You know, put it up there on the website, stating it's a new thing. You got to start adhering to it. However, we, we're going to put an extract on the screen as well to show that this actual this actual diagram is uh, was in HB thirty nine. You said nine ninety seven, I think you were saying, and um, HB one one four. They actually had that diagram as well. Yeah, yeah. H- <laughs> so I, I, do you know what? I actually brought the yeah. old copy with me today, yeah. uh, which is HB 39, 1997. 1997. 1997. And can, you, you, can you actually open up the page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Open up the page. Show, show me this. Section five. Ancient this is the, Rainhead. Yeah, this one's come straight out of the, uh, the tomb of someone. Right. So if we go looking for a Rainhead in here, nine, back in 1997, there it is. See, look at that. There's the new rain head. <laughs> and the thing is, I want to ask you this. Why did HB39 introduce the Net Cali design and heaps of other designs? And now they've actually reverting back to this old style again. Okay, so uh, we'll, I'll give you a bit of a history. Yeah, if you can, that'd the be great. The yeah. history of rain heads in, in Australia. Uh, so basically, uh, the Australian standards is for was the Australian standards that we know them yeah. today today came about in um, the late 90s about 1998 mm. which is interesting right yeah, so yeah. 1997 we had we had this handbook which has as you as I just showed you yeah. has a picture of an open faced open fronted rain head mm. it also has a picture of uh, another rain head uh, in section 5.7.3 which is like an open fronted, but they dropped it down a little bit, and so there were two conflicting rain head designs in that in that one handbook. So that handbook was current for one year, and in 1998 there was a new handbook, which was the uh, uh, HB114, which is still uh, going in Victoria. Yep. And uh, in that handbook, there there's there's only one rain head, which is the open faced one, but. People yeah. are calling new now, okay? Yeah. So back in 1998. Yeah. Uh, that, that then went into the Australian standards. So in 2003, when the new standard was printed in 2003, yeah. it had an open face rain head in the standard. But that meant there was a conflict between the Australian standards yeah. and HB39, which also has this other rain head in here, yeah. which is uh, figure 5.7.3. 
So this this one here got got. So we had that that there, and the, we had the that's in basically HB thirty nine nine ninety seven. Yep, yep. And then we had we so we had two. We had an Australian standard that said it must have an open yep. open above the weir, and one that said you could do this, which almost achieves the same thing, but yep. not quite. Right. Yep. The problem was that the Australian standard version AS thirty five hundred three had all the calculations and measurements and how to do it. Yep. And the other one had nothing. Yeah, okay. So it, it, it was a, a guess a guesstimate. Okay, there was no way of sizing it properly or connecting it in with the rest of the drainage system. Unfortunately, that particular handbook, the uh, HP 39, 1997, that, uh, that stayed in print uh, in, in, it, in that same format until 2015. Yeah. So it was a long time, you know. It is, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, till now, it's still not updated. Yeah, and yep. then so then um, there's only been one amendment, one amendment sorry, to, yeah. to HB 39, yep. which happened in 2021, uh, and it was um, Amendment 1, and it took out figure 5.7.3. Oh, there you go. And it also, yep. uh, which meant that the only rain head that was acceptable in any format was the one in the Australian Standards, mm. which requires the, uh, the front of the rain head to be open Above the weir and the yep. weir twenty five millimeters below the sole of the box cutter so or the base. A is thirty five hundred point three. Uh, so we had the first HB thirty nine nine ninety seven. Yep. HB one one four nine ninety eight. Yep. And then A is thirty five hundred point three. When did that? Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three came out, and H- and basically it had the open. It, it was open. It was open. Yeah. yeah just, to, just so we show people exactly what happened with each one. Yeah. And uh, and now, like now, at, from this moment, uh, since, sorry, 2022, that design, the Net Kelly design, can't use it anymore. No, there's no there's no such thing. This this whole myth of the Ned Kelly rain yeah. head, you know, yeah. uh, this very Australian sort yeah, of yeah. Uh, context, it, it's just it's just not there. It, it, it doesn't, it has no hydraulic yeah. backup. Okay. Yeah, so th- that person designed this, uh, I heard that he booked a one-way ticket. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, the, my understanding is that uh, they did some testing on on this figure, five point seven point three, yeah. um, at RMIT uh, University. And, oh wow! Yeah. Um, but then they lost the testing for a, a long, long time, and uh, so no one really had any sort of backup for it. Oh, and uh, so yeah, you mean that they, they lost they lost the actual paperwork, or they yeah, apparently they lost the paperwork that went with it. Oh, so there was so there was some testing and they lost it. Yeah, and then you know, obviously, do it again. It's going to cost more. Oh yeah, but it's also it's also a bit outdated because uh, so this is the old figure. This is the one that we got rid of, yeah. right? So the problem with that is it says it says here that you've got a you've got a you can lift the rain head up to fifty percent of the flow rate. Yes, yeah. Now that's super confusing. Because everybody would normally think, oh, you know, I've got a box gutter and the box gutter is yeah. 100, yeah. un- say it's 100 mil deep. Yeah. Oh, I'll lift it up to 50% of that. So that I'll lift it up 50 mil. That's not actually what it's saying. Mm. It's saying 50% of the flow rate. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, flow rate within a box gutter is a very tricky beast. Mm. Okay? Yeah. It's not where you think it is. Yeah. The deepest part of the box gutter can be upstream. Yeah. And it's actually one of the shallowest parts of the box gutter is right down at where it enters the rain head. Mm. And so if you have to work out that, first of all, you've you got to work it out, it's difficult. Yep. And if you guess it, you might say, okay, I'm going to, my maximum depth here might be 50 mil. That means I've got to be 25 mil yep. above the, the, the front of the, the, the sole of the yep. box gutter. But that is a complete, that completely overrides some, one of the basic principles of AS3503, which the box gutters are free flow. Yep. So you're putting a bit of a weir Yep. in front of the box gutter. And so it just doesn't work hydraulically. Yep. So that's why it's been gotten rid of. They've, they've eventually uh, taken it away. Yep. Um, and But they haven't they haven't done a great job of telling people uh, yeah, to I'll, this point that yeah. they actually have done it. Most plumbers don't even know. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, we get a lot of inquiries through our social media saying, hey, can you please uh, let me know which clause it states that I have to use this kind of... Um, uh, uh, rain head and I'm like it's actually uh, on the VBA website and you can't even yeah, find yeah. it properly yeah it's very oh, hard it's very hard very, yeah and amendment one isn't you know HB 39 hasn't been reproduced yeah it's just had an amendment so you'd have to actually go to the Australian standards and look for the amendment to actually see whether there's been a change there yeah and you know half the time when I'm dealing with plumbers 
when, yep. when we have a discussion and they disagree, and they go to the truck and they pull out the 1997 version yep. and hand it to me. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a little bit out of date. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my god. But they're they're, they're living they're living in the nineties, mate. Yeah, Not just yeah. on Triple M, they're living in the nineties, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh my god. Um I wanted I wanted to also ask you, um I, when I was on the VBA website, I, I downloaded this audit sheet that the VBA uses. This VBA audit sheet, is this for the actual the VBA, you know, inspectors, the plumbing inspectors going to site and undertaking inspections because I'm looking at it and it's saying level one has the roof drainage system been designed and sized appropriately like if someone's coming on the site and he has to do those items is the discharge capacity adequate for the catchment like this is complex stuff and how can I, how the hell can you do this on site within 45 minutes or an hour for example yeah, this well, is, what do you reckon? Yeah, this is this is um this is really interesting. So yeah. the VBA audit system. So first of all, the VBA audit a uh, small percentage of plumbing jobs. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know from what I can see on the VBA um their their own documentation is they they they're getting around if you're lucky three uh, percent oh, wow. of, of of plumbing jobs. Now there's a lot of plumbing jobs done yeah, yeah. every month. You imagine if you've got to give a compliance certificate on every job done in Victoria that's over seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's, it, it just rains compliance certificates down there, okay? Yeah. And so the other interesting thing about compliance certificates is I could build a multi-storey building with 400 apartments in it and give one compliance certificate. Yeah. Or I can build, uh, you know, a block of townhouses and I might give one compliance certificate for every townhouse or I might only give one compliance certificate for the whole lot. Mm. So sometimes it's a, it's a little bit deceptive. Yeah. And so... Their three percent of jobs is a very very small amount of the jobs that they're looking at. Uh, so when they're turning up on a job to look to look at this, they they have their iPad just like we've got here, yeah. and they walk onto the job and they say, "Oh, I'm here to audit your your place." Yeah. The homeowner has to sign them onto the property, and then they come in to have a look at it. So my experience is that uh, these these things just get ticked off. Yeah. Now. Um, and, and my experience as well, as well as the experience of many, many plumbers that have spoken to me, is that the audit inspectors haven't been able to um, access the roof even when ladders are provided. So, uh, you know, they, they, ring you up, they ring the plumber up and say, hey, we need you to provide access to us. You put the ladder up ready for them, they turn up, mm. they don't climb the ladder. So uh, then you have these questions which start, you know, with this, has the roof drainage system been designed and sized appropriately? Yeah. You know how complex that is. Yeah. Uh, most plumbers haven't done any calculations. Most yeah. plumbers could not provide any documentation yeah. to prove that, and yet that still gets ticked off. I uh, actually, uh, before we go to the other items, uh, you know HB, uh, sorry, A is thirty five hundred point three. Yeah. If we jump to that, and then you want to, we want to go to uh, the part where the general method. Oh yeah, so three point three point seven is your look, what you're looking for. Yeah. 3.7 and have, new version, and have a look at this flow chart. Like, is this what they have to do to to basically see if this complies or not? Like, look at this table. We've got 15, uh, 13 steps for, um, sorry, where is it here? Flow chart for uh, general method for design of box cutter sump or side overflow device. We've got nine, 15 steps. So they vary actually. So they vary every so, single. So what we've got, it starts on um, page thirty-two at, at section seven, three point seven point four, design yep. procedure. So uh, this is this is amazing stuff, and most people are ignorant of this. Okay, yeah. so uh, so the VBA are asking in their audit for audit people to look for the calculations, um, and we'll also get to uh, them asking for yep. people to use the general method. So this is the general method. The general yep. method starts in. Section 3.7 of yep. the Australian Standards, AS 3503, 2021. Yep. You pass through the general method, which is just basically trying to explain how to do design work. Yep. And then you get to this bit, which is the design procedure. So this is trying to back up to say how you've done it. Mm-hmm. Okay, there are, four, there are three A, B and C ways to do it because there's only three devices in the Australian Standards for discharging a box cutter. Yep. There's a rain head, there's... Um, a sump and side overflow. So um, pretty people are pretty familiar with that 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 um, product. And then there's this mythical beast, which which is the sump 
so, the, the sump high capacity overflow yeah. device, which if you've seen one of them, you're pretty lucky. Okay. Yeah. So right. th- there's these three that. devices. Now, if you then flick to page 32, we starts this quite confusing um, step list. Mm. Uh, so we've got for a rain for a box cutter discharging to a rain head, there are thir- 13 steps of pain. Now, the VBA, do they have to basically go through this process? Oh, this is only when you want to, when you, when you want to design the box cutter system, you actually go through that. But don't they have to go? Through this to see well, they're they're basically their their audit list is saying we want to see some calculations. Yeah. Where are the calculations? How do we know it's been sized correctly? Yeah. So you can't guess the calculations. This is you know, for instance, you know the you know the very first step here is determine the AEP, which is the average exceedance probability for the site. Yeah. Now you know that varies for every suburb in Australia. So someone's got to look that up either in the Australian standards or via uh, the Bureau's site on longitude and latitude. So this is where it gets complicated. So that, that number is going to vary quite considerably even from, you know, uh, Melbourne to Frankston, yep. let alone Sydney to Melbourne to Adelaide to Brisbane to Darwin, you know. So uh, then, then you go through these steps and, uh, you know, you, you, you follow through 13 steps. Yep. So that's to size one box gutter rain head combination. Yep. Now, if you then flick to the next one, which is the uh, the sump side overflow, which people are familiar with, yep. it's got more steps. How many has it got? 15. 15 steps. You've got quite complex uh, uh, mathematics to do here. Yep. Uh, most, most of this math, that's right, math yeah. is going to boggle most people. <laughs> Um, I know I've handed this to engineers who've looked at me strangely mm. when, when, when I've asked them to do yeah, this. Yeah. I had an architect the other day who queried me about something I'd done. Yeah. So I sent, I sent that person the, the, the 15 steps for this yeah. device here. I never heard from them again. So, oh you know, uh, and then you go to the, you know, as I call it, the mythical beast of the, of the high capacity overflow. And wow, we, we, we max out here at 17 steps. 17 steps, wow. Now, yeah. now if you want to see how those step, what that looks like in reality, you have to go to, um, you have to go down to uh, the, there's another section called, um, it's Appendix H. Appendix H. I'll so if you go over to Appendix H, Appendix H, this is the general method yep. design example. <clears throat> so it's those flow charts that we were looking at just there before filled out yeah so what you start to see here is they give you an example it's an example um figure 1.1 is a pretty straightforward building like this is you know typical of the australian standards which imagines that we're using box gutters yeah. on uh factory roofs or you know a sawtooth factory roof or something and so that looks like a pretty easy example it's giving you all these sizes yeah. walls and everything it gives you the charts that you should be looking at and then whoa on a page 140 50 there's 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 the whole design example that we were looking at all 15 steps yep. 13 steps of it filled out the last time most plumbers did this was at trade school yeah they might they probably did it in their course <clears throat> uh but then most of them completely forgot it yep. because no one's using it out there now what's something really interesting and plumbers have to know this right now because the vba released a new practice note roof plumbing rp02 so yep. if you if you want to bring this up, it's yeah, yeah. So basically, this came out um, August uh, twenty three. Yeah, August twenty three, the first of August. First 20- of August, yeah, it's hot off the press. Basically, this yeah. thing, yeah, wow. So they've got that, and if you scroll down to deem to satisfy design and installation parameters for box cutters, we're not going to go through the whole list, but we've highlighted some sections and. What, what, do you, what do you think of this here? They, they, they're actually saying the depth of box gutter and sizing of sumps, rain heads, downpipes, and overflows must be designed using uh, the general method specified in AS3500.3. Wow. <laughs> so, so tell me, yeah, this is a big one. Yeah, so that means every single job that you and I look at yeah. should have demonstrable proof that somebody's sized it Yep. Using the general method, which is what we you were just talking about right now. This seven, seventeen steps, fifteen exactly. steps. You got to do those calculations, exactly. and, and and just don't, just don't, so get people to get their head around this. Okay, so if you go down to your local plumbing store yep. and you buy a ninety degree um, 
PVC bend, 100 millimeter, 90 degree yep. sewer bend. Okay, that bend's got a watermark on it, and it's been through a whole bunch of processes to say how that works, how much water goes down yep. it, how it, it's been certified so that you can actually put that into a system. Yep. Now, when you come to roof drainage, you can't, you know, well, up until very recently, you couldn't go anywhere and get a product yep. that had any sort of certification like that. Mm. And so the only way that you can certify as a plumber that a, a, a plumbing installation for roof drainage is compliant with the Australian standards, like well, that's what DTS means. Yep. It means um, deemed to satisfy the performance requirements of the Australian standards, yep. is is to do the calculations. Mm. So you All become right. you become the person who's following the the steps to show how you do it. Yep. Now, when we're going out and looking at you know completely stuffed up drainage systems, one of the questions we ask to the plumbers, either you know personally yep. or through the lawyers, sometimes yeah. is. Where's your demonstrable proof of DTS? They gotta have that calculation. They, they can't. They can't come up with it. Oh wow! Right, and so that's that's where it all falls down because suddenly you got the VBA against you as well here. Yeah. Now, yeah. So what happens if somebody can't produce this DTS, like does calculations? What happens? Like, is there a penalty that that they? Um, I mean, obviously, it's not. It would be non-compliant because it failed, and they can't produce it. This deemed to satisfy design. Yeah, well, it uh, means it means that the design was guessed, and what it, there is no design. It's a guess. It's a guesstimate. Oh wow! So it means that know. you know you've you've gone down to your multi million dollar block of flats or yep. or your house in in Turak or something. You've put the design, the roof on, but you guessed it. Yeah, he guessed it. <laughs> um, uh, it he guessed it, a- certified it. Yep. And the surveyor also said, "Yeah, he's happy with it." Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. People, people would go nuts. People, if they actually understood yeah. that there was this little thought going into it, yeah, they'd go, they'd go crazy. Because people are actually trusting a registered building practitioner, yeah, who's a plumber, registered yeah. building practitioner who's fully insured, and he's the he's actually guessing the roof design, yeah, uh, certifying it and saying, "Hey, man, I've done it." The VBA doesn't check it unless there's a, it's been flagged. Yeah. Basically, they come yeah. in. Well, he's cheap. got he's got a less than three percent chance of getting an audit, yeah. and we know they don't climb oh, wow. ladders. Yep. <laughs> so but like, oh, I've I've got a drone, you know, and and sometimes when I can't access the roof, I, I actually you know get the drone up there. It's very hard to co- to basically conf- confirm if, for very example, hard. like a high capacity um, uh, overflow sump design has to be one fifty mil deep. How can you? We can, we can't, can't even do that with the drone. We no. can't do that. So you actually have to get up there and it's hard work. You know, it's hard work it getting is. down there and measuring yeah, yeah, everything yeah. and checking everything. Yeah. Which is what we do. We go out and you know when we're doing forensic investigation, yeah. we're basically doing an as built uh, design. Yeah. So we're going out to the building, going, "This is this big. This is this big. We're as building it, and then we'll go away and we'll yeah. actually do the calculations here." And most of the time, the job, you know, they don't stand up. Sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes people, what they've done in the past is they've oversized things. Mm. So, you know, they've had, all these, they've had all these problems. So, <laughs> you know, their idea is you, you turn up and there's this box gutter that's like ginormous, you know. It's like one metre long. Oh, yeah, know, man, man. And I, the water's I, ponding in it. I had one guy, he, he said, I've done the best thing here. It's 800 mil wide. Oh and I'm God. like, you've got to be kidding me, mate. You're outside the Australian standards <laughs> now. You're like, you have to performance solution it. <laughs> oh my god! I was just wondering what happens if he goes over that. No, no, it's it's. You still got to get a performance. You still got a performance oh. solution. You know, because you're the, the Australian standards is is between you know uh, in box gutters it's between two hundred mil wide and six hundred mil wide. Yeah. As soon as you're bigger than that, things start to happen. Like water goes slowly. Mm, like okay. you, you know what I mean. Like it, yeah. it, it, you've made it so wide. It's like the Ganges. It just so, spreads so out somebody and floods. Uh, does that design uh, oversize? It just shows that this guy, it hasn't done a DTS. Ha- hasn't done his uh, no, basically. And, then, and you know what? We then do the calculations and we find that it's got two liters a second running down it, and it could oh, be a two hundred okay. box cutter. Yep. You know, so they've lost all of the cleaning and flushing capacity by mm. by making it too big. Yeah. But but this is the guesstimate. You know, ah. Yeah. Oh, I always fix these up. I always make our box go to 600 mil wide, no matter what. Yeah. And, and it's just, it doesn't, it's not how the Australian standards works. It's, it's always working um, to measure it to the, to the actual area of the roof. Uh, there's also a point here. Uh, 
in in their new update, they got they say that box cutters must be straight without a change of direction, and discharge all the downstream and without a change in direction, i.e., not to the side. Now this is uh, basically uh, you know a lot of roof plumbers know about this, and it's it's not, it's common, and it's not, sometimes the architects actually incorporate that design, a change of direction, and they still do it till now, you know. And uh, what, what I was gonna what I was gonna tell you, a roof plumber approached me the other day and he goes, "Hey, we do a lot of renovation works to older homes, and we need to change direction uh, off a box cutter. You know, we need to do that. Is there some device that we can use that can help us with that section and kind of uh, comply with the standards?" And I said, "Mate, have you checked that down, Buster? They do have uh, a, a basically a performance solution for their product. They have a, a, a actual product that can enable." The change of direction, but it's called a change of direction stump, as you were saying. Did you want to explain? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More yeah. about it, please. So, so this all comes out. This has all happened organically. Okay. Yep. So, we, as I explained, we were, uh, you know, we were working. You know, the people who made Dambuster yep. were working in the insurance industry, either yep. in the engineering side of it yep. or um, loss adjusting or yep. the plumbing side of it, and so we were dealing with absolute mayhem in regard to uh, uh, the failed box cutter systems in Australia because we've changed the way that we build houses yeah. in Australia. You know, when, I don't know, when I, you know, I'm 50 yeah. years old now, so, you know, I grew up in a fibro sh- house in Sydney. I call it a shack. It was a house. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we had a pitch tile roof, yeah. fibro walls and bigger over hang- hangs over yeah. the house and it used to flog <coughs> down with rain and I don't remember a water leak in our house, Okay. It was a simple old house, yeah. but it didn't leak. Uh, we don't build houses like that anymore now. We we cram them onto the site. We build to the absolute maximum of the block. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're having to get creative with the roof designs yeah. to be able to do this. We've got setbacks, which mean we're going to have to have flat metal deck roofs on the, on the yeah. lower floors and often on the top floors as well. Yeah. So box gutters become very helpful for the designer yeah. to actually be able to – to maximise the amount of space that's being utilised on that property. I get you. The problem yeah. was that the Australian standards never envisaged yeah. that that would happen. It thought box cutters were limited to domestic, uh, commercial buildings yeah. uh, and of factories and, and places like that. Now we're using box cutters in a totally different way. And so when, when I was working in the uh, insurance industry yeah. was when this was all happening. And we were starting to see the the first problems with this because yeah. you have to remember that we had a millennial drought, so we changed doing things mm. right when it stopped raining, and oh, then it yeah. did rain. It did, it hardly rained in Australia for mm. ten years, right? We just didn't. And then when it when it bucketed down, and and it continued to rain, heavy rain, mm. constant rain right through until now, basically, yeah. uh, we've had all these problems, and the problems relate back to. The design. So when people are building these buildings, they run into problems. They're going to run into design issues, yep. which are always going to mean they've got to change direction. Now, they're caught by the Australian standards that says no change of direction. And so we were caught by that as well. Mm. And so when we were fixing that places up, yep. we had no way of fixing them. So we found ourselves, you know, changing the pitch on roofs and doing crazy, yeah, yeah. enormous tasks to try and meet the Australian standards. Um, and it was then that, uh, you know, um, a couple of us started asking questions. And one of the questions we asked was, why can't you change direction? <laughs> yeah. Like, it says it, but why can't you? And uh, we trotted off to um, Associate Professor Robert Keller from yeah. Monash Uni. And he's uh, probably one of Australia's leading, one of the world's leading experts in uh, hydraulic design, particularly open yeah. channels. He's a lovely guy. And he, he said to, when we walked in and said to him, hey, uh, hey, Rob, why can't we change direction? And he said, why would you want to do that? And we're like, yeah. well, people are building this way. And, yeah, yeah. and, he, and he went, oh, I've never had, in all my years, no one's ever asked me that question. Beautiful. Right? And he'd written 120 papers on open channel drains. Yeah. And so we were able to work with him to say, well, what, first of all, why does the Australian standards say it? Yeah. And um, the, the short answer there is if, uh, if you run water really fast down a box cutter and then you change it at 90 degrees really quickly, mm. the water doesn't go straight around the corner. Yeah. 
it hits the back wall. And as the flow rate increases, because the flow rate's yep. constant, it's not like, you know, just a big flush of water down there. It's a constant thing. And so that water hits the back wall and you get um, a hydraulic sort of wave that backs back up the drain. And so you get a flooding in that corner, in the 90 degree change of corner, which depro- deposits debris and rubbish in there. Mm-hmm. And then also means that the box gun is no longer free flow. Yeah. And because it's no longer free flow, it doesn't meet the Australian standards. So I love that, yeah. yeah. So we were able to work with um, Robert Keller mm. and um, create a system where we could drop down in that corner, um, speed the water up into the corner, and then um, the water goes round the corner yeah. into another straight section of box gutter. Yeah, and we've got – and uh, I've asked you to bring that device with you because I actually want to show people uh, that there is a solution for that. That complies. You've got a performance solution – sorry – yeah, yeah. The, the, so the Dambuster products uh, were all uh, created with Robert Keller. Yeah. Um, and uh, we also did testing yeah. uh, up in the University of Sunshine Coast, lovely place, yeah. uh, with another professor of hydraulics called Professor Terry Lukey. So between the two professors, there's an awful lot of experience. Yes, yeah. And so we were able to uh, overcome some of these issues. Yeah. Uh, now, we certified all of our products – as DTS via expert judgment, so deemed to satisfy via expert judgment, yep. uh, which is allowed under the National Construction Code. Uh, and so you can look that up in the National yep. Construction Code. And that's. So when um, somebody buys one of your products, it's, you know, for, for use in the plumbing industry, it actually comes with its own performance solution. Yeah, well, oh, sorry. Uh, it's got both. It's got both. Performance it's got both. Solution. It's yeah. got. It's got Free, the performance solutions yeah. are free on our website. Yeah. So you only just have to download them yeah. and utilize them in the job. And uh, you need to get the stakeholders yeah. to agree and there's a few conditions yeah. there. But yeah, all the data and everything you need to do a performance solution is there with Dan yeah. Buster. And there's also the potential to do it with DTS via expert judgment yeah. if your regulator is, is, is happy to accept that. Now, in Victoria, the VBA have been a bit slow to take that up. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're having discussions with them, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty good discussions with the VBA on this issue. But you're probably safest to use uh, performance in Victoria for Dan Buster yeah. products. Yeah, sweet. So I'm gonna sh- we're going to show how, how it works. We'll bring it up and... We'll just show the guys how you know how it streams and all that stuff. Just explain it. Thanks a lot, Russell, for this. This is the basically the box gutter right there. And if you if you come inside here and have a look, you can see how there's a sticker right there that says Dam Buster, and also there's a, in a basically a, a, an etch inside a little stamp that says Dam Buster as well. But this is now we've got the sump here. Yeah, you so want to explain what's going on here? Yeah, no worries for everybody. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is a basic. This is our most popular product. Yeah. Okay, so this is a Dambuster R three hundred rainhead yeah. and a TSO side outlet. Yeah. So basically, these products have got adjustability built into them. So you know, if somebody's built the box gutter a bit bigger than it probably yeah. needed to be, or something like that, we can get some adjustability, and it also helps with retrofitting as well. Yeah. So we've pre-drilled with a laser cut. Oh, wow. We've done this, so this this is like beautiful, you know, yeah, your, yeah, your product yeah. can look fantastic. You see the quality in the, the folding yeah, yeah. and the yeah. joints and everything here. It's actually like, what is it? It's thick, it's thick as well. Yeah, yeah. it's a really, it's, it's good thickness material. Yeah. Uh, we only use a really high quality blue scope product. And so this is uh, this is our, our best device. Yeah. So once you, you know, your box gutter sections just drop in here, people, people are always worried they're trying to fold them down and do stuff. Mm. All they have to do is run silicon across here and drop the box gutter in. Yeah. We're gonna pull this apart now and just have a, have a really good look at how it goes. Yeah. So you've got this sort of short short sump area that then runs to the rain head. This is your internal box in the Australian standards. So you just come and have a look in here, right? So when we're looking back at the Australian standards, you've got that open, open-faced yeah. rain head. Yeah. It says you shall have you know nothing above the weir. Now, what we've got here is there's a weir. We've got nothing above the weir. Mm. It's open-faced into this area here, yeah. and then the water shoots straight down. And okay? this, is, this is your painted design, basically. This you, is our painted design. Yeah, you, you, you created this with this idea. This it's is a really, very really sound, clever. it's a really sound hydraulic principle, okay? Yeah. So what you have to remember is, like, that overflow there mm. 
has been tested to 16 litres a second. Yeah. That doesn't mean that's where it stops. We know that that overflow will do far more than 16 litres a second, but we stayed within the parameters of the Australian standards. Yeah. So all of our products, it's really clear when you, you know, you start looking at our products, the, the, the small one, the 200 version, 16 litres a second. Yeah. The 300 version, 16 litres a second. The 400, 16 litres a second. Yeah. And so we just, the stop is here, but you can keep pumping water into this. Yeah. It will, it will um, keep taking it out. So I <clears> also <throat> noticed that cover there. Oh yeah, now, yeah, now, no, this is cool. What is this? <laughs> okay, so if you're digging deep into the uh, Australian standards yeah. and the handbooks, you suddenly realize that where, where this goes through the parapet wall, yeah. the underside of the parapet wall is open. That means rats, birds, yeah. anything can get in there. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it becomes like a spot for vermin to get into the building. And also, if you've got water running down the walls on the parapet, the water can get into mm. this section and down around the outside. To be honest, I've never seen a cover like that. When no, you never seen it. When I inspect box cutters, that's never there. Yeah, because the thing is with Ambuster, we've been looking into the standard. Yeah, so and this, going, this is a breach of Australian standards. If yeah, it's exactly. Not, if it's not covered. You can add like, this to the list, mate. All right, let's go. Um, and so this slides in here, and then the plumbers can lift that up to any level they like. Look at that, yeah. And then, oh, right. and then they rivet from the inside. Fully, fully enclosed. And then they can incorporate that into the flashings on yeah. the inside of the wall. Fully enclosed. Have a, have a look at this. Fully enclosed in the parapet wall. Nice and professional. Yep. Compliant. Absolutely. Yeah. So but I, I just love this, how you've got the, the already stitched up here, so it's all, yeah. they don't have to measure anything. No, nah, and all the Drilling. laps are in the direction of flow. All that kind of stuff's been thought Even of. Even that as well. Look at that. Yeah, see, you've now, thought of everything. We tried, mate. We tried. <laughs> That's it. So, if we just let that sit, yeah, that's going to yeah. sit there. Let's just have a look at the rain head, right? This is this is our best product, right? This is, this is beautiful. Yeah. I love this thing. Uh, this that, is, it this does is look good. And it feels really so nice. Yeah. This is just a piece of industrial design, okay? So basically, we've got a seal at the back here, which is part of our patent. Yeah. So uh, the funny thing is the Australian standard always draws the rain head and the box gutter joined together. One. Yeah. Now, how do you do that, right? So what we've done is we've created a really good seal here that allows the plumber to put in yeah. a whole bunch of silicon in here. Yeah. And then they lay their box gutter. And um, you know, a lot of them don't like doing this, but they can just lay it flat there. Mm. Okay? So what that means is you don't get that annoying drip. People people hate it, man. Yeah. Especially in multi-unit residential where there's rain heads all over the place. You, or, and when it rains. Yeah. This way you sound. can this way you can have this just the, the, the box gutter is just sitting in here. You know, if you use this as an example of the box gutter, yeah. it just sits like that. Yeah. So it's a really nice, nice fit. Um, and the water then just runs down the end of the face and doesn't yeah. drip uh, into the into the rain head. And then we've got our uh, protection of the product. Do you want to get this? Have a look at this here. <laughs> a little bit hard to see on the black one. Yeah. But uh, we've got DB three hundred written on here. Yeah. Uh, so. That, that's that's only able to be done with a laser cutter. Yep. And we've also got other little marks and, and stuff that no one knows about in these yeah. products, right? Yeah, yeah, good, which, yeah. uh, which means that they're very clearly, yeah, look, it's your, clearly ours. It's your design. I mean, you come up with this. It looks really, it looks sexy. The whole thing. Yeah. You know, it, the compliant rain head from 3500.3, you can see the box cutter. It just looks ugly. You can oh, see all mate, the box cutter. Not even a mother could love that thing. <laughs> it is just ugly. I see them, they're like leering mouths yeah. of like clowns or something, you know? Yeah. They're horrible. Um, and no one, no one would want that on the house. And that's a good enough reason to fill out two bits of paper uh, and get a performance solution. Yeah. So, you know, and, and then you can have these. Yeah. Which is a, is a beautiful piece of um, so basically, industrial design. You, you attach this on your roof. Look, look at this. It looks so nice. You can't see any holes anywhere, and the overflow is right there. Yeah. And that overflow is way beyond the capacity. And only that, like, check this out. You, you've even incorporated this little lip here. Yep. So when it does discharge, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a drip. It's a drip line. A drip okay? line. So, so our, this... our nameplate actually equates to a drip line. Yeah. And so you don't get that water running back and then yeah. coming down the wall. That's what I mean. You thought of everything, and for an extra 10, 20 bucks, you're well, missing out on all this, all this high quality material. You yeah. Know, and, exactly. and product. Yeah. And and the thing is, people just need to embrace the product. Plump pots or plumbing, right? Yeah, yeah. This is made a different way. It's uh, quite easy for these yeah. for companies to, to to get on board and, and get this product out there to people. Let's go back to the podcast and see what else are, what else is going on out there, man. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> All right. 
Thanks for showing us uh, those products. Really appreciate it. Now, I want to continue with the list from uh, the RP2 from the VBA. Another one is that all box cutters must incorporate provision for expansion. Now, it also states where the distance between fixed points exceeds six meters and the appropriate intervals for the materials and situations as uh, prescribed by the standard, which is 3500.3. Now, can you explain this point right here? Now, this, is, this is really interesting. Eh? So, uh, so first of all, it says all box gutters yeah. must incorporate provision for expansion. All right. Right? Now, I reckon that, that doesn't get that just doesn't go into people's ears, yeah. okay? Because you uh, you see it, I see it. Uh, when we're looking in box cutters, measuring to see how big they are and stuff, all we see are screws bang through the side walls of box cutters. Oh, you mean the you mean the plastering screws, yeah? Yeah, the gold the goldies, <laughs> the, right? goldies. the goldies. You mean whatever was laying around? And whatever was laying around, but they just I do see it all the time, yeah. Yeah. Now the crazy thing about that is. Um, the VBA are absolutely right there when they say right. box gutters require expansion provision. Now, the moment you put a screw into a box gutter, you've stopped it expanding. You've fixed it. Oh, wow. You know what? I, I, I did not know that. Yeah. So, so if they screw it anywhere to hold it in place for some temporary reason, for example, let's just say it's temporary, um, that you've actually created the fixing point. Absolutely. So, oh. so uh, the standard... Yep is that box gutters are free to move, okay? And then also what it, what it's saying, so if we go to AS 3503 and we yep. look at our, um, on page 42, I think it is, yep. uh, there's, there's uh, this section here, which is called uh, thermal variation 4.3. Yep. Uh, so this is all about expansion joints. So this also backs up what the VBA is saying, but it gives you much more information than what the VBA yep. are putting in their, their roofing um, uh, yeah. update so there's a table here table 4.3.2 which is where you need to go for this kind of information yeah. to find out what you can do and so what you went, what you realize here is when you when you're looking through this you realize that you're only having to put expansion provision in like um, where there's fixed 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 points uh, so if a box gutter is free to to move like if you had a box gutter that ran to both ends of the building and it had no, it just ran into a rain head at yep. both ends of the building. You you wouldn't need to put expansion provision on it. Um, still might be a good idea to put it at the high point, uh, you know, an expansion yep. band or something. But you don't actually need to do it because the box gut is free to expand. Mm. Now, the moment you bang some goldy goldy screws yep. in the side of that, you've changed everything. Right, and so also the other ways that a fixing might might be is if there's a sump running to a, a, a you know a pipe, yeah. which creates a fixing. Uh, but normally box gutters are meant to be installed so that they can move around. They're not meant to have expand and contract basically. Yeah, because they do expand and contract. Yeah, so I'm looking at this table right here. Yeah, for example, we've got steel and base metal thickness. Let's just assume 0 0.75 mil. And if it's free, if it's both ends free to move, it states that you can have 50, uh, like every 50 meters, you're supposed to incorporate. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Drink. But if you do fix, it says one end fixed and other end free to move, uh, it states 25 meters. Yeah. But yeah. then there's nothing about, you know, multiple fixing points. That's why the VBA said six meters. Is that is that what they did there? Yeah, they, they have. And um, I think up, up above here, it might say... Um, no, oh, no. sorry. It does say, yeah, in uh, 4.3.2 a. a. Right down the bottom. It says, it says uh, shall be provided where the distance between fixed points exceeds six uh, six meters. Sorry, they do have it right there, but it's not in the table. No, it's not in the table. Yeah. So they pick, the VBA is picking up on that part Yeah, and they're sort of not filling in the rest of yeah. the information. Yeah. Uh, they're not talking about the expansion space that you're meant to have between the end of the box gutter and the frame of the building. So often when we're looking at box gutters, they're jammed in right tight hard against yeah, the yeah, frame. Yeah. So they've got nowhere to go. Uh, and what you have to remember is box gutters sit on top of a roof. Now one day in Melbourne, you know, we get four seasons in one day. Yeah. So we're going to have a summer day that's really yeah. cold and by the afternoon it's 45 degrees. So that box gutter is going through a full, massive movement range yeah. um, as it expands. Now, if it can't expand, what happens is it everything starts to 
you know, get really uh, tight. Yeah. It'll shear rivets. It'll break things. I've seen some rivets, yeah. Yeah, and what you'll yeah. also see out there, which is a really, really common problem that, that I'm noticing, right, is that plumbers put a box gutter in, they, they get down one side underneath the roof sheets, yep. cross, and then they go right up to the top of the parapet with the box gutter. Mm. Now, uh, that's they're basically trying to get rid of the hanging flashing that would normally be there. Yeah. So they make it in one piece. But by doing that, they then fix it because otherwise it just goes bang, 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 bang in the wind all yeah. over the place, right? And then what you'll see is this, this wobble that mm. goes along there. And that's called, that, yep. that's called oil canning. And that means that the box gutter is fixed all over the place Trying to expand yep. and it can't, so so the the, the metal sort of buckling and bowing, and you'll get fatigue and breakage and leaks as a result of it. So that's a breach of the yeah, standard. Total breach of the yeah. standard. I pin that on jobs all the time. Oh, uh, that's a that's a give me. Know. me. It's a you know it's a free kick in front of goal, mate. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. start incorporating that in my reports now. <laughs> <laughs> the more defects, the better. Now um, another one here, uh, another really. Good point here as well. They've got some requirements of HB39 conf- uh, conflict with the requirements of AS3500.3. In these situations, the requirements of 3500.3 shall be used. Yeah. Now, that's taken a long time for them to say that because they love <laughs> HB39. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it's quite clear that the Australian Standards takes precedent over yeah, that's very the handbook. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, ha- the handbook's good in many ways. It's got yeah. lots of lots of good stuff in it, but uh, there's stuff in the handbook which is just flat wrong um, compared when you yeah. when so you go to the Australian standard. So always, basically, you gotta you gotta look at both documents if you are you know picking on defects or compliance. You gotta have a look at the HB thirty nine and and also thirty five hundred point three. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. say for instance, the the classic example is the depth of a box gutter. Yeah. So the, the, the HB39 says the minimum depth of a box gutter is 75 millimetres. Yeah, for uh, to, uh, for like... For any... For any box gutter. Yeah, see, that's what it is, for any box gutter. Yeah, eh? yeah, so it's this yeah. magic, it's the magic number, okay? Yeah. Like 75 exactly mil. Right. Uh, now, we could never work out what was going on there because when we were looking at the Australian standards, there wasn't a 75 mil mm-hmm. height like for a box gutter. Um, now... The thing is, if you do put certain coordinates into there, yeah. you'll come up with the only size of uh, sidewall height that will match the Australian standards at 75 mil is a 600 wide box gutter mm. running at three litres a second on a one in 40 slope. Yeah. That's galloping down the hill. So basically, right? if we were to assume that we're going to go with 75 mil depth at the high end, yeah. as per HB39, and then we look at the graph from 3500, yeah. It's going to stay, hey, you need to actually, the box gutter has to be 600 mil wide. 600 mil wide, <laughs> only three litres a second, yeah. right? So it's, you're not going to get that many yeah. uh, square metres of roof into that. And then, not only of all of that, but most, most roofs, we were yeah. doing one in 200 <clears throat> slope. This is a one in 40 slope. So, uh, so that's, that's going really steep. You yeah, know? yeah. Oh, and yeah, that, that's that, right. That's the only way you can get a 75 mil sidewall height. I mean, if a roof plumber... Let's just say I want to I want to ask something. If a roof plumber goes, hey, before they said this, the VBA, if a roof plumber says, hey, I've actually used HB thirty nine, and it states seventy five mil. Let's just say I'm on the roof plumber and I, and I did that. Yeah, seventy five mil. I put it in. I've listened to the standard, um, and now that these guys are telling me to change it, otherwise, uh, as a roof plumber, what do you think he can do? You oh, know what I mean? He's caught yeah, now. I kind of feel sorry for them because like the 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 problem is. HB39 has just got poor English. You yeah. know, it, the way you, you... In the old version, it was it was just plain wrong. In the 1997 version, it was yeah, plain yeah, wrong. Right. But in the 2015 version, they didn't actually change it, but they changed a few words around it. Mm. So now, oh, you need to check to go to the Australian standards. Oh, okay. uh, but they still kept a 75 mil in there, which isn't right. So it, it's only right in that one instance yeah. that I told you about. Yeah, what, what what do you think a roof plumber can do, like in terms of liability? Like he's stuffed, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm well, just saying, like, if I'm a roof plumber doing that job, I'm like, man, I tried to use HP39. It told me 75 mil, and I did that, um, and it wasn't a requirement for me to cross check 3500. Now, what, what what do I do as a roof plumber? Like, if somebody wants to sue me now. Yeah, well, the what the hell is, is going to happen? They're going to use the Australian standards. They're going to go. Oh, so no, he's basically that, they're going to use the Australian standards on you. Um, oh, yeah. You know, they're going to get medieval on you on the stream. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's bad. So you can't sue the VBA. So no. it's your fault. You can't do that? Absolutely. Oh, damn it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so now 
If I go down the next page, and you know what? This is probably, I just want to talk about this last thing from this document right here. If you go to page two, yep. uh, page two, sorry, not page two. This is page uh, four. Uh, uh, photo C, image one, photo C, oh, where yeah. they have a box gutter. Yep. If we look at the, um, this page right here, and uh, the C, the C, the C basically photo. Yep. It shows that the box gutter is discharging into a sump, and then basically the sump discharges directly to a rainhead. Now, I did an inspection yesterday for this home, like a mansion of a home. Yep. Yeah. And all they have is this design. Yeah. Yep. So plumbers call this. Plumbers like to call this side sump shoots. Oh, that's a good name. Side, side sump, shoots. sump shoots. As per AS yeah. 3500? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you go looking for them, you won't Can't find, find it. Can't find it, yeah. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a, it's a hybrid. Yeah. Um, so, like, like, there are similarities between this and what we use in the Dam Buster yeah. uh, range. So, we're using something similar. Yeah. But the difference is we've tested it. We've yeah. got evidence of suitability for DTS via yeah. expert judgment, and we've got performance solution. Yeah. So we've got all the all the ducks are, are are lined up. The problem here is the VBA are pointing out you you can't do this because yeah. they're saying, hey, that's a change of direction in a box gutter. Yeah. It's often not done very well. Okay, so when we when we get down and we put this under the microscope, yeah. you stick your GoPro down and you start having a look. What most of the time they've done is they've slid a piece of box gutter under the gutter. Mm. And then they've so what they've effectively done is drop the level of the spill level of the box gutter. Mm. So if you get blockage in there, the box gutter itself doesn't flood. The sump floods and then straight into the building. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So it's wor it's yeah. worthwhile chucking the camera in there to have a look when oh wow you know, yeah viewing the photos of this. But there's often a lot of space in yeah. there for for water to leak. Yeah. So it's a bit of a problem. And you know what? There was actually a leak at both ends. It's actually a long box gutter, and they have that set up on either side. Yeah. And both sides sh inside the home show that there's a leak. Yeah. Which is yeah, I was surprised. And the thing is, it does state. In that in that caption, examples of non DTS, so non DTS box cutter designs yep. installation. But the thing is, your setup for this scenario, you've yep. got to set up for that scenario. Absolutely, that Dan Buster, I've got this absolutely covered. Yeah, and we've but we've tested it. The difference is, you the, and, and you've got you've got the documentation. We got you, documentation. You, you don't have to go calculate. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You know what I mean? It's all done for you. Say, so, hey, mate, this is my design scenario for this complex home, for example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And all right, here's your performance solution. Yep, done. Yeah, and here's the product. Yeah, here's the product, and also the product itself has been made beautifully, right? Yep. So the plumbers aren't trying to, you know, hash this together yep. on site, yep. uh, and you're not trying to. You're not exceeding their level of skill yep. to try and put this in. Yeah. So you've got something which is custom made, ready to go, all yeah. slots together, as you saw before in the video. Yeah. It all slots together nicely. Uh, the everything's, everything's just made perfect for you, plus it's got the documentation and the evidence of suitability. Yeah. So basically, guys, um, I'm going to be totally honest. We're not getting – like I don't want any money from, the, from them, Buster, and they're not paying me for anything. This is just to help the construction industry. The plumbing industry, you can see from the high – high percentage of non-compliant items, you know, through the VBA, you know, all this stuff, there's a massive problem in the plumbing industry and he has got a solution, an easy solution to make everything, you know, easy to apply in the, in the plumbing industry, you know, and uh, basically we just want to help the industry out. That's all we're doing. And people think, oh, we're getting paid all this money to talk about this. But this is a solution that people are, are not looking into and it's very important to incorporate these designs and save the headache <laughs> You know, from you going there and uh, and and coming up with performance solutions, you know, and and doing all these calculations, all done for you, all fabricated, done, and uh, I mean, you can, you saw from how good it looks as well. Everything's you know, all the stitching, you know, normal the forty mil apart, done everything properly. Yeah, we've we've gone to that next level to I make know. these things work. You can tell you hold it in your hands compared to you know what, how dodgy are those. <laughs> Uh, are those um, rain heads, the copper, drain, the copper rain heads? Oh, man. Oh, do, my do God. Do you know what? The thing is, right, what people need to understand about Dan Buster yeah. is we're innovative not just in the sense that we've, we, we're trying to solve some of these problems. As we yeah. discussed before, you know, we were asking professors of hydraulics, yeah. how, do we get, how, do we, how do we fix this? Because yeah. you can't tell the Australian building industry that it can't change direction with a box gutter. Yeah. It's, 
the, the, the fundamental is that most properties are longer than they are wide. Mm. Therefore, the box cutters are always going to be on the sides. Yeah. Right? So you need to be able to change direction. People don't want rain heads on the front of the house. Yeah. So therefore, they need to be able to do it in a way that's actually achievable. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's, you know, one thing to say it's non-compliant. Uh, the other thing is you now then have to look at uh, we have a way of making it compliant. Yeah. which is safer. And also, when I said our products were made not just innovative in the way they do things like this, they're innovative in the way they're made. So our products are all uh, a program like for yeah. SolidWorks. And so um, that, that SolidWorks program means that every single one's the same. That's how we keep yeah. quality. And yeah. therefore, then they're made and folded automatically. So all the tolerances are like tiny, you yeah. know the the line the the rivet holds line up. Everything's perfect. Yeah. Every single oh, time. I, I could tell because when I when I when I when I even hold the dam buster rain head, it's actually it feels heavier than the other ones. The, 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 there's thinner metal for thinner well, metal. It, it, <laughs> it's a piece of industrial design. Yeah, that's what it is. And, and the other the copied ones, they haven't got the proper testing and. Oh mate, you know, don't get me started. Seriously, <laughs> uh, this, this is my world. This is, yeah, these guys, these guys yeah. are mad. So first of all, first of all, you copy a Dambuster product, okay? Yeah. If you're not copying off, like the 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 SolidWorks program, which you don't have any access to because only licensees have that, right? Yeah. You're you you're making it blind. You don't know how you're making yeah. it. You don't know what we're doing to make that product. So you're having exactly to like right. you know measure it and, and make it yeah. most of the ones I see that are out there and you see them, I see them yeah. in your videos, you know, yeah. they're crap. Absolute yeah. crap. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then the sizes don't match up. They're what we call poor copy. Mm. So what people are doing is going, Oh geez, we don't want to get in trouble for patenting this. So we'll change it by 20%. And that means we'll get out of it. Now, lo and behold, we thought of that. Yeah. We've got poor, poor copy patent. Yeah. So if they copy us in any way, they're gone. But the main problem is, they don't have any evidence of suitability for yep. DTS by expert judgment. They don't have any backup for performance solution. Yeah. If the house floods, the they got nowhere to go, mm. right? And so what's going to happen is that the, the householder's insurer is going to walk out, walk onto the job and go, flooded house. Uh, well, we'll fix up the damage to the parquetry, French parquetry flooring yeah. when you fix the roof, oh, wow. which is going to cost 100 grand or more. Yeah. So, right? you, so you're telling me if the insurance come and th that they discover that they you've got a non-conforming product there. Yeah. You're gone. Installed. Gone. You're gone. You're so if you don't anymore. use Dambuster, and by the way, all Dambuster products are marked Dambuster. Mm. So they've either got a sticker, a serial number, or it's laser engraved into the product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay? did see that, yep. Yeah. So it's pretty easy, and that's going to become more and more and more easy for people to do, right? Mm. Uh, so... What you, what you realize is that you're risking the homeowner's own insurance. Yeah. And when a homeowner can't get their, you know, their, their French oak floors fixed, yeah. they're going to come after the plumber. Yeah. Right? They're going to come after the plumber and next thing there's going to be a lawsuit. Oh, for sure. So these people and are- to save how much? Oh, I, I, I'm 10 telling, bucks. That's all, 10 that's bucks. all it is. The difference between the, 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 the copied rain head and the compliant rain head, the, the conforming rain head is like literally- Ten twenty dollars, maybe thirty dollars yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, come at on, the absolute most. <laughs> that's okay. what that's, that's why it most. drives me crazy when I see one. Even when I'm driving to work, and I, and I actually stop the car and I take photos and I report it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, everywhere only, I go, yeah, I know. It, you send me the photos. It's yeah. like it's it's just a nightmare for everyone yeah. involved. And um and also what people don't understand is the building surveyor is responsible for this as well because if you know, he hasn't he hasn't ensured that there's not there's conforming building products on the on that site. Oh, so it's a building surveyor. It can as well. also be a building surveying issue. Oh, didn't so, know that. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, yeah, you know what? We're always going to have people who do the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't benefit anyone, and also it takes away um the numbers from the legitimate people who are making Dan Buster. Yeah. Uh, so we we license Dan Buster to, yeah. to to people. We don't, we don't set a price for yeah. it. It's set by the market. And so the more people who use Dan Buster, the cheaper and cheaper it's going to become. So uh, just want to go back for one point. Like if the building surveyor who does the final inspection walks onto a site, yeah? Yep. And, and all you got to do is look up, uh, look up on the, you know, the wall there and you can see uh, a, non uh, a copied Dan Buster. Yep. Even if it's the, 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 the real Dan Buster, yeah, the original one, should the building surveyor be asking the builder, say, hey, you've got 
arraign here, not as per 3500.3, even though he's got a certificate of compliance, should he also ask the, the builder, say, hey, I need... Uh, the performance solution for these rain heads? Yeah, if if it proves that performance solution is the only way to go. So yeah. in Victoria at the moment, that's yeah. how the VBA are treating it. Yeah. So yes, in Victoria, in Victoria, you sorry. need to make yeah. sure that performance solution is with the building surveyor. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you know in the future that may not be the case, but we're oh, not yeah. we're not one hundred percent sure at yeah, this yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're in negotiations with the VBA to see if we can free that system up a bit. Yeah. But at the moment, absolutely, the building surveyor needs to be saying, "Hey, where's the performance documentation for this?" Oh, good. So we'll see how we go. Yeah, uh, that's a re yeah really interesting one. Um, Which, yeah. by the way, our performance documentation is yeah. free on the website. Yeah, so you can download on the website as well. Yep. But the thing is, would people go? Um, and download that for the copied ones? Well, they can, but it doesn't do them any good. Mm. Okay? So it's 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 not going to do you any good, and certainly not going to do you any good if the house is flooded well, and I, um, you're in a court, court yeah. case situation. Right? Well, if I go to a job site and I do find uh, you know, a fake dam buster and then we, we see that they've used your paperwork to sign off a non-compliant, uh, sorry, a non-compliant <laughs> rainy, because it is non-compliant, yeah. because it's not your one, um, uh, they can get even into a deeper trouble. Oh, it just gets worse and worse. It's just not worthwhile, right? You know, like... And for know, $10, $20. You know what? People just need to You know get what? Call me up. I'll give it 10, 20, 10 bucks, man. <laughs> just get the proper one. People need to <laughs> just... You know what? Are you serious? It's, it's, it's like you innovate and then people copy you yeah. and they're not even getting the value of it. They're, yeah. not, they're not getting the value, right? Yeah. They're not understanding... That there's a lot of smarts behind this. Thing, yeah, yeah, right? exactly right. Like, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's not um, worth doing. All right. So also here we've got. Um, I want to go back to uh, the actual audit sheet that the VBA uses. You know how it said uh, that has the roof drainage system been designed and sized appropriately? Now AS thirty five hundred point three. There's like 17, 15 steps. Yeah. Yeah. To design something and the products that you've got right there. On your website, you've got a table. You've simplified the whole process, so yeah. you don't have to do this formula. Oh, can you explain this, please? Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, so when you're using Dam Buster, even if you're using it as performance solution in Victoria, yeah. uh, so the Dam Buster products are pre-sized. So every product in our range has a flow rate attached to it. So it, it works between a certain flow rate depending. Say, so we're just talking about rain heads for a moment. Yeah. So you, if you choose an R300 rain head, it's going to work um, up to 9.6 litres. I think it's 9.7 litres a second, yeah. depending on which downpipe you select for it. Mm. The overflow for that rain head is 16 litres a second. So far beyond the actual uh, weight, the, the internal part of the rain head. So when, when we're looking at um, making design easier for people, if you go back to those steps in, um, in in the general method, what you'll find is as you go through the steps in um, for, for the rain head, you get to this one that says, now size the overflow devices. Oh, yeah. Right? Yep. So you've got to go through size your box cutters, then you've got to size your overflow devices. So when you're using Dam Buster, all you have to do is size your box cutters. Hmm. And then the Dam Buster products plug into that. Yep. So once you know how many litres per second are coming down that box cutter, you yeah. just choose, from, yeah. you select from our range and the performance solution looks after you at that point. Yeah. So you don't have to do the 13 steps, yeah. right? You're choosing a proprietary product uh, just like you would choose a, a product from, from a plumbing supplier that yeah. to do a certain amount of water through it. Yeah, exactly so right. it's, it's a much easier system. And also what we've done is we've simplified the charts in those horrible charts in Australian yeah. standards that drive everyone nuts, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we were able through our engineering section to look at those, come up with a single equation that actually ran, ran the charts for free flow box cutter. So this works for... Can you give us that equation? I'll put it online. No, joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> we, we're guarding that one, no, man. But, but the thing is, you've, <laughs> you've got a table. Yeah, we've got that a table. table. I use that table as well as a quick reference. Oh. Instead of going through that graph... Man, you know? my life changed. When that table happened, it, it, yeah. you know, uh, Rowan and one of our engineers called me one night and said, I've had the eureka moment. I've sorted this and I can do this on a single A4 piece yeah. of paper. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, and... No um. So yeah, we ended up with, with, with this baby, you know? Yeah. And so what this means is that if you know the flow rate yeah. and you know what size box gutter you've got, this 
sizes the box cutter for you. Yeah. This one piece of paper. So you got your flow rate on the example here. You got you got uh, we've we've chosen six liters a second on a three hundred wide box cutter, and yeah. it's telling me that the the shallow end of that box cutter yeah. is one hundred and eighteen millimeters deep. Yeah. Now we we tend to round that up to one hundred and twenty. Yeah. And then for every meter you go downstream, you add five millimeters for one in two hundred millimeter fall. Super easy, yeah. right? And you can do that for any. As you can see, you you can you know you got your flow rates right up to sixteen liters a second here, and this is all available on the Dambuster website under the tech download section in the quick guide, page nine of the quick guide. Yeah, so it basically makes the whole process for the plumber, you know, instead of you know he's been creating the job doing all that work, he has to do all these calculations and everything's done for you. You go well, there. What I won't say everything, right? Because yeah. the problem is you still got to know where you are. Yeah. And how much roof. So, and then when you know those items, you go to that table yep. and it saves you a lot of work. Absolutely. Yep. Now, the formula that people have to get their head around, and you'll find this in the quick guide as well. Yep. If, if, if the people are watching this, actually just download the quick guide from yep. Dan Buster. Yep. Sit down one night and I'll read put it. A, I'll put an extract as well on it's the screen. It's a beautiful document, yep. right? No worries. And so that document there gives you the formula, which is super easy for roof drainage design, which is the square area of the roof times the uh, one in 100 year ARI or yep. e, uh, a, AEP. So for instance, that for Melbourne, that would be 187 millimetres per hour. Yeah. Uh, now, what I tend to say to people, there's, there's some shortcuts here that they can take. Um, so if you're working in, say, Melbourne, yep. we've looked at that and there are no, there's not one single suburb in Melbourne that's beyond 200 millimetres per hour. In fact, yep. there's not many in the whole state of yep. Victoria. There's only really Mallacoota and, and the high country. Yeah. That, that goes above that. So if you just choose 200 millimetres per hour, yeah. you can pick up every suburb in Melbourne. Beautiful. And most of Victoria. Yeah. And so you're timesing the square area of a roof, which most people can do, yeah. by 200 millimetres per hour. So that's giving you everything in millimetres per hour. Yes. But you need litres per second. So you simply divide it by 3,600, which is the magic number of seconds in an hour. Yeah. Oh, wow. Bingo, spits That's out. It. You got your liters per second. Yeah. Right? And the moment you've got that, the keys to the kingdom, mate. Exactly right. This is the, this is this is what's very hard for a lot of people to calculate. Yeah. Yeah. And then from that you can uh, use a table. You can plug in the dam buster system. And, let's go. and yeah. because you're oversizing slightly, you're going to cover yourself for any little yeah, yeah. anything you get. You know, if you're not getting the top of cappings yeah. or whatever, you're oversizing a little bit for that. And you're away. So that's going to give you yeah. uh, the starting. Sometimes it's really hard to get started, yeah. but that's a really easy way to go. But you'll find all that information in the um, in the quick guide and also in the other document on our website, which is um, Compliance for Victoria. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really handy little formula that people love to get. And that's why I, I love supporting your, your stuff. You know what I mean? Every, uh, like everywhere I go, we, I, I, I refer to your uh, technical guides all the time. I actually learned a lot of stuff from it. Yeah, That's yeah, how I great. started getting into roof climbing because, as you know, you go on a roof anywhere in Victoria, guarantee defects. Yeah, well, the, the, the VBA <laughs> are picking 41%. Yeah. Uh, For I, me, I, it's I'm 100%. You, <laughs> it's 100 Every time I go on a roof, that's why I love going on roofs. You know? Uh, roofs, roofs, 100%, man. 100%. No one gets it right. <laughs> Every time I go on a roof, it's non-compliant items all the time. Yeah. No, nah, look, I appreciate you coming and giving us all this insight, and really appreciate your time. I know you're very, yeah. very busy. No worries here. You know, um, basically, uh, look, it's going to help a lot of roof plumbers out there, builders, builder surveyors, and I, I wanted to get this, or uh, you know, all this info out there. It's the latest information. R Russell, is there anything uh, you, you want to let uh, our audience know about your products? That you know, where they can buy it. If somebody wants to buy some of your products, where do they go, for example? Well, yeah, if you just go onto the Dan Buster website, we've got a whole stack of uh, licensees now. Yeah. Um, we're starting to spread um, up the east coast of Australia. Yeah, yeah, we've got right. licensees in Victoria. <laughs> uh, you can go through Foxco in Thomastown, Netfold over in Sunbury, um, and up in New South Wales, um, we've got uh, uh, um, some people who have come online there as well. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know... Well, Just, Queensland, Queensland as well, or yeah, no, mate, we're looking for a licensee in Queensland at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we would love some more interest from Queensland. Yeah, like yeah. it absolutely flogs with rain in Queensland, yeah, well, uh, and yeah. we need people to like um, 
get on board up there. Yeah, we get a lot of inquiries from there. Yeah. Wanting me to go and inspect there. Yeah, so. absolutely. But yeah, they've been a bit slow on the uptake, the banana benders. Yeah. So um, yeah, like, yeah, we got some, we got some yeah. great licensees who were doing wonderful things, uh, metal building and hardware, um, in uh, metal roofing and hardware yeah. in Sydney um, are doing great stuff as well. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, on the next episode, guys, we're going to have another expert as well, um, possibly maybe a lawyer as well. We'll see how we go. But until next time, let's go.